Hello all. Uh, today we are going to start with the second unit of computer networks. It is about the responsibilities of data link layer. So in the previous unit, in the first unit, we have seen about the physical layer as well as few responsibilities of data link layer. That is, uh, we have learnt about framing and error control. In this video, we are going to learn about uh, the flow control techniques. What is flow control? Flow control, as I have already told you, flow control is one such principle which ensures that a fast sender will not overwhelm a slow receiver. How, how will it do so? It has some set of procedures which will restrict the amount of data that a sender can send before receiving an acknowledgement. Meaning, I will send the data until I will get the acknowledgement for the sent data, I will not send data further. That is called flow control. Now, what is that error control we are going to look into? We have already learnt about error control. We have learnt about error control. That is, we have learnt about error detection and correction techniques. Error control in data link layer will be mostly that whenever a frame is not received, what I will be doing is I will be sending it again. I am going to go for a retransmission. That retransmission of a frame is called as automatic repeat request. Once the frame is not received, I am automatically sending it. I am repeating the request for sending the frame. That is called as automatic repeat request. In short, we call it as ARQ. Now, as I told you in this video, we are going to learn about the flow control protocols of data link layer. The flow control protocols of data link layer are divided into two types. Protocols for noiseless, noiseless channels and protocols for noisy channels. What are the protocols for noiseless channel and what do you mean by a noiseless channel and a noisy channel? A noiseless channel is a one which does not have any noise. There are no errors. Whereas a noisy channel is one where the transmission medium is prone to noise and errors. So uh, that particular channel is called as noisy channel. So for noiseless channels, we have two simple protocols. One is the simplest protocol and the stop and wait protocol. And for noisy channel, we have three very important protocols that are stop and wait ARQ, go back in ARQ, selective repeat ARQ. What is stop and wait ARQ? As I told you, it is automatic repeat request. So let us study each one of the protocols. As I told you, what is a noiseless channel? It's an ideal channel where we assume that no frames are lost, duplicated or corrupted, which generally doesn't happen. We will, in real world, we do not have any noiseless channels. But if at all, to start from the uh, uh, fundamental, uh, we, uh, we are assuming that the channels are noiseless channels. So the two protocols are simplest and stop and wait protocols. What is a simplex or a simplest protocol? Here I assume that there is no need of flow control or no need of any error control mechanism. The data is unidirectional. The data is being sent in only one direction where the frame is traveling from the sender to the receiver. The data link layer, how does it get its frame? It will uh, get the frame from the network layer and it will make it gets the data from the network layer and it will make a frame out of that data and sends it to the physical layer. On the receiver side, the physical layer bits are being taken by the data link layer and they are again transformed into a frame. And that frame is being transmitted back to the network layer as a packet. Okay, this is a simple process which goes on. So now you see how, is, how the simplest protocol works. The simplest protocol works like this. That only the data is, is being sent in only one direction. There is no flow need of flow control. There are no errors. Uh, you will send a request for a frame. You have sent a frame. The frame has successfully arrived. You sent one more frame. The frame has successfully arrived. You have sent one more frame. The frame has arrived. Okay. The frames are all being received safe and sound. Then comes the second protocol, which is the stop and wait protocol. Now, what is stop and wait protocol here? I will ensure a little amount of flow control, meaning in stop and wait protocol, as the name specifies, I will send a frame and then stop. I will send a frame and then stop and I will wait. What will you wait for? I will wait for an acknowledgement to come. Once I get an acknowledgement of the frame being sent, then I will send the second frame that is called a stop and wait protocol where the sender sends one frame stops until it receives 
acknowledgement from the receiver and sends the next frame so at any time on one channel we will have uh, on the forward channel we will be sending the frame and on the backward channel or a reverse channel we will be re receiving an acknowledgement so it is just like a half duplex link that we have already learnt now you see now this will be very clear for you with the diagram what is a stop and wait protocol the sender a on a request for a frame will send a frame will wait this period will wait for this period for an acknowledgement to come from the receiver once the acknowledgement comes confirming that the frame is received by the receiver then it will send the next frame again it will wait for this time for the acknowledgement and then it will send the next frame and so on. So this is your stop and wait protocol. Now what are the disadvantages of stop and wait protocol? The disadvantages of stop and wait protocol are that if I have sent a frame, I have sent a frame, I have sent a uh, frame now you can see uh, sender A has sent a frame to sender B. It arrived. Okay. It has sent an acknowledgement. But this acknowledgement has lost. So what will happen? Sender A because it is not receiving an acknowledgement will not send the next frame at all. So the transmission is being stopped here. Okay. Now for example the sender has sent a frame b hasn't received it it the frame has been lost obviously it will not send an acknowledgement so what will happen again a will not send the next frame because it is not getting the acknowledgement for the first frame so this is the problem with stop and wait protocol in any case where either the frame is lost or the acknowledgement is lost the sender cannot send more data so we will go with the noisy channel protocols which will solve these problems so the noisy channel protocols are the one which will implement both flow control and error control mechanisms so the noisy channel uh, protocol will implement both flow control and error control mechanisms uh, they are stop and wait go back and selective repeat automatic repeat request now as i told you these three are very important protocols from the exam point of view also you will they will come as long answer questions for you now before starting with the stop and wait protocol let me tell you there are two questions to be answered what are the two questions is that if the receiver does not respond when there is an error how does the sender know which frame to resend the same thing as I told you that uh, whenever I have to uh, whenever I have sent you a frame and uh, you you didn't receive it or you couldn't respond that there is an error so which frame will I resend that is one question second question is when you are sent you received an acknowledge uh, received a frame but you didn't uh, you have sent an acknowledgement that is lost so how will I take care of all these things so the answers are given by stop and wait ARQ protocol which makes use of acknowledgements and sequence numbers. The frames have, every frame will have a sequence number and an acknowledgement number. With use of these numbers, we can keep track of the frames which are being sent or lost. The acknowledgements which are being sent or lost using these numbers. Now what are sequence numbers and why are they used? Yes. So now, what is the sequence number used for? As I told you that I have sent some 100 frames. Okay. If I don't number the frames, out of those 100 frames, 5 frames have lost. Now, how will the receiver tell me which uh, 5 frames it did not get? When I number the frames, when I give sequence number to the frames, it is easy for both the frame, for the sender and the receiver to know which frames have been received safe and sound and which have been lost. So that is the purpose of sequence numbers. But one thing that has to be mentioned here is the sequence numbers that are given to the frame are based on modulo 2 arithmetic. They are based on modulo 2 arithmetic. What is this modulo 2 arithmetic? It is simple. It is about binary numbers. I will use the bit zeros and ones for uh, specifying the sequence numbers. Now the sequence numbers are being set to wrap around. The sequence numbers are being set to wrap around. See, I have a limited frame size. 
in that frame only I have to specify the field for sequence number. So I should see to it that the sequence number of the, the of the frame should not occupy more space. So I will be using only one bit sequence number. In this one bit sequence number I can have a sequence number 0 and 1. Only two sequence numbers I can have. Will it be enough for me? Yes, it will be enough for me because the sequence numbers are taken in the range of 0 to 2 power m minus 1. This formula is important. How do you take the sequence numbers? The sequence numbers are taken from 0 to 2 power m minus 1. For example, if I have taken m as 1, 1 bit uh, sequence number, then it will be 0 to 2 power 1 minus 1 is 1. That is, I will have two sequence numbers 0 and 1 and that will be enough for me to number the sequence to number the uh, frames. Now what, what do you mean by wrap around? Wrap around means first frame will be numbered 0, next frame will be numbered 1, then again the next frame will be numbered 0, then the next frame 1, again it will wrap around, this next uh, frame will be numbered 0 and then 1 and so on. This is called as that the sequence numbers wrap around and that if I have uh, x as the first sequence number, second will be x plus 1, I will not require x plus 2 at all. You will understand with an example. Acknowledgement numbers are also numbered using modulo 2. But very important thing to know about uh, acknowledgement number is if you are sending a frame 0, that means a frame with a sequence number 0 and if it has been received safe and sound, the acknowledgement will be 1. What will be the acknowledgement number? The acknowledgement will be, acknowledgement number will be 1. The acknowledgement number is the, not the number which will tell you the receipt of the frame 0. It, it tells you that now it has received frame 0. Now it is expecting the frame 1. Okay. For example, I have sent frame 1 and the receiver received frame 1. The acknowledgement will, number will be 0 telling that I have received the frame 1. Now I am expecting the frame 0. So acknowledgement numbers will all will always announce the sequence number of the next frame that the receiver expects. Now let us see the procedure of uh, stop and wait ARQ. What happens here is you see you try to understand this. Okay, now you see I have told you one question that when I am sending a frame and if the frame has been lost or the acknowledgement has been lost, what has to the uh, sender do? The sender has to retransmit automatic repeat request. The sender has to retransmit the frame. But when will it retransmit? It will whenever a sender is sending a frame, the procedure or the design of the stop and wait protocol is such that whenever the sender is sending a frame, okay, what it does is it will keep a copy of this frame. It will, it will held a copy of the frame, okay, and then it will start a timer. It will start a timer, okay. The timer is set with a time called as the turnaround time. Okay, the time taken for the frame to go to the receiver, come back uh, for the acknowledgement to come back, that much time is being set in the timer. Whenever the timer expires, then what happens? The sender will resend the frame. So the recent policy is whenever a frame is being sent, the copy of the same frame is held at the sender because there is a chance that the frame or acknowledgement might be lost. But when does it retransmit? It will retransmit when the timer expires. Okay, so you see here now we uh, we have uh, the frame sender SN receiver RN. Okay, I am sending the frame 0. I have sent the red uh, mark here specifies that it is uh, there is a request for the frame 0. We have sent the frame 0. It has been received properly. So what happens? The acknowledgement as I told you will not be the, uh, the acknowledgement will be all, always the next frame expected. So now Rn is pointing to 1 meaning that it is expecting the acknowledgement, uh, the frame 1. So the acknowledgement number 1 comes here. So the receiver will send the frame 1. 
okay now when the frame one is being sent by the receiver uh, by the sender what happens the frame has been lost when the frame has been lost obviously you will not get any acknowledgement so what the sender does it will wait for this particular time it will uh, wait for the time out and then it will send the frame one again you can see the frame one is resent here again so then what happens the receiver will receive this frame you can see the frame number one has been received so what does it expect now it will expect the frame number zero as i told you the sequence numbers are wrapping around i require only two sequence numbers x and x plus one i will not require x plus two okay you can see this this is evident here now what i am expecting the frame with sequence number zero so my acknowledgement will be zero so the acknowledgement comes here and what the sender does it will send the frame zero you can see the sender is sending the frame zero now when the frame zero has been sent and been received safely what do you expect now i expect uh, uh, the uh, frame with the sequence number one so when i'm expecting the frame with the sequence number one my acknowledgement will be one but uh, what happened the acknowledgement has lost here here frame was lost here acknowledgement was lost in any case what happens the sender will not come to know whether the frame was received or not so what it does it will wait for that particular time okay whenever it sends a frame it will he held a copy of it will hold a copy of that particular frame and will start a timer when the timer expires it will again what will happen whenever there is a time out it will resend the frame which frame frame 0 is being resent when the frame 0 is being resent it is being successfully received what it was expecting uh what it was expecting it was expecting one the acknowledgement was for one but what you did you have sent for a frame 0 because here it has received it successfully only the acknowledgement was lost so what happens the frame 0 that you are sending is a duplicate so it is uh, what it does again it will discard because it wants a frame with a sequence number 1 so what it does it will discard it and it again send with an acknowledgement one telling that i want the frame 1 so again in the next step the uh, the sender will send the frame 1 so this is how the stop and wait protocol will work the sender will send uh, the frame whenever it is sending the frame it will keep a copy of that particular frame will start a timer and whenever the timer times out it will resend the frame at the receiver side if the frame was received successfully but the acknowledgement was lost then that frame will be discarded as a duplicate or otherwise it will be accepted so this was about your stop and wait arq thank you